the most frustrating thing in Escape from Tarkov is when you die and you have no information, no info on where your enemy was or what you could have done better or nothing to relay to your teammate if you have one. In this teaching tactics video, we are going to talk about what you need to gain as much information as you can to live longer in your fights. I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. If you like this video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel. That stuff helps me out a ton, maybe more than you think. So thank you so much to those that do that. And I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. With all that out of the way though, let's go ahead and dive right in. So our teaching tactics videos are a lot like our lessons from beyond the grave. We're going to watch back a clip in its entirety, uh, this time of a play that me or me and a teammate made really, really well. And then we're going to go back and break this down. This was a bit of an extended firefight. So I am going to chop up some of the parts of the dead parts of the fight where nothing happened. Um, and we're talking about situational awareness. We are talking about knowing the maps, knowing what's around you, knowing where to look to gain information so you don't end up being one of those guys that gets one tapped and then you just have zero idea on what happened. Uh, death is one of the best ways to learn how to get better. So even if you're dying, you want to at least have the information on where your enemy was and how you can get better at the game. So we're talking about situational awareness. We're on interchange. I apologize that interchange lighting isn't great and it's a rainy, foggy day. So it can be kind of hard to see, but for the most part, you're going to be able to get uh, everything that we want to talk about here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the clip. Mm, let's go on the I think the I bear guess. with the broken English would be cool too, Safrio. Like I get what he was saying, but like, I think it would be sick. Ooh, shots here. Mm -hmm. Where was that? Guys coming back where we came from, same way we came. I okay. might have killed him. I two. had, I only saw one. That, that was that mother game. flipping spidey sense, bro. <laughs> I turned and the dude was standing still ADSing on me. Nice work, dude. I'm uh, I'm back at the tents area right now. That was that spidey sense, boys. What the frick? Uh, was he on the outside or was he at the inside? Of he, the had, he had kind of like just... Okay, so he does have a buddy. Oh, he's still alive. Okay, I saw that nade go off. Um, direct the opposite where yep, I am on yep. the top of the tent here. I expect they'll probably push left as well. Yeah. This isn't a great spot, but I'm going to hold it now I'm here. Eyes on. One sec. Didn't hit him. He's running left to right. Um, inside. He's running back towards where the grenade blew up. Okay. I can't believe I missed that shot. One guy. Looked like a U-lag. He's in the far wall. Um... Where the van is. This fog really skylights mm -hmm. you. It's horrible. Especially since I only have a PK. I reckon he might be behind that van in the corner there. Uh, okay. Directly opposite us. I can use my laser to mark it if you want. That might not be a bad shot. Yeah, yeah. On the right side? Yeah, I'm going to laser it up right now. See that red laser? I don't. Left side van. Um, I'm gonna come down with you though. Oh, oh, I see him. I just saw him. Left side, left side. Yep, yep, yep. He flanks to the left. Okay. He missed me. He's throwing nades. He's hurt. He's hurt. Okay. Not dead. No, he's still up. My nade in. He's at the van. My check. Pushing left. Shooting him in the legs. Yep. I need. He's got to oh be dead. Dude. Another, another, another. Throw nades. Throw oh nades. God. Watch, watch, watch. Okay. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. Yep. He's hurt. Fall back if you need to. I got this. Was he at the Connex? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My nade going long past you. Okay, heard it. Good. So 
switch your magazines. Back up. Yeah, he's close left here. Mine it. Oh, he's on the floor. He's prone. He's prone. He's prone. He's, prone. he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. No, he's not. What? Dude, my guy, um, I'm gonna shoot him. Clip. He took so many bullets to die, I stopped shooting him twice and he still shot me in the head. All right, so that was a fun and pretty extended firefight with a three man underneath. Um, we, we talked about how this video is really centering around situational awareness and that all, a lot of a lot of why we won that fight right there was because of how we were handling this immediately moving into the mall. So if you play interchange a lot, you know that just plethora of flanks and, and areas to move and all the different ways to like attack a different situation. There's an unending amount of angles and flanks and routes to take. So that can be really daunting to try and cover them all when you're in a fight and right off the spawn, um, spawn fighting is a huge part of escape from Tarkov and it's a huge part of learning the maps and learning how to handle the first few minutes of a raid. So I want to take a look at an interchange map and show you what we were thinking, or at least what I was thinking in this first part of the fight. So I've used this website before a ton, mapgenie.io. I'll link it down below. Um, but this is a great tool. I've hidden everything except for the spawn points. So these are all the possible spawn points. It doesn't mean somebody's going to spawn in every one of these. But we got this spawn. So as we're running in, you see us running straight towards Ollie, towards the underground. And this over here on the left is the underground. So we're moving in towards this side right here, towards the kind of like right underground entrance under Ollie. Now, you can see all these other spawns over here. Um, what we know from playing Interchange is that a lot of times, especially these spawns, are going to move directly in to our side here. So once we move in underneath, you see us both start looking at this. Now, I know that I've died by this enough times that if you get this spawn or maybe one of these spawns, if these guys want to be really cheeky, what they can do is walk by and instead of entering the underground here, they can circle around and come back in and potentially get behind us. Or if any of the other spawns, if these guys are looking for something in Ollie, like a quest item or something, then these guys might come in late. And if they don't want to mess with the rest of the mall, they might just hug the road and then come in directly where we came in behind. And this was the huge win here is that I knew that I had a duo and I knew he was looking this way. I knew that we weren't really going to, in the first 39 seconds of the raid, have too many people coming in from the other angles. The other thing we are worried about is anybody spawning back here, coming in the back side of the underground, which are these three entrances, and then moving across. There's a actual cross section here where the wall is broken and you can move underneath here. But that would have taken a little bit more time. And as soon as we walked in, we're checking left. And I knew that he was checking, or sorry, checking right. I knew he was checking right, so I flipped around and checked behind. And that was really what put us in a great position to start this fight off on the wrong foot. So you see, we're moving in. He's, I mean, he's all looking left. He's in, this is Jeepo. He's an interchange main, basically. He's all looking right down here at this entrance. And so I know he's looking there. I know we don't have too much to be worried about straight ahead yet, except maybe some scavs. I want to start watching this. And, uh, you know, we didn't hear anybody. I didn't have any reason. I just have died a few times. I know that maximizing the amount of angles that you're covering is a win when you have a duo. So I don't know. I mean, we, you never really know if this was a random solo or if this was, you know, a team. We're All the information we're given was this was a team because I killed this guy. I got super lucky with some shots there and killed that guy before he kills us. And then we almost immediately start hearing grenades and stuff like that throwing in. So we want to be as far away from possible. The visibility down here is is not great, uh, which works both ways. When there's low visibility like this, if it's it gives you an opportunity to stay hidden and kill somebody without them letting you know. But at the same time, it's really frustrating in these low visibility environments to just die out of nowhere and not know where your enemy is. So we want to back away from the fight. We hear some grenades. We want to get back here where there's tons and tons of hard cover if we need to move quickly. And we want to kind of 
survey the area and see if they're going to move in. Because what right now, immediately, what we're doing is we're wondering if if there's teammates, which we know that there are because we hear the grenades, are they going to be moving in? And look, once again, I'm holding this left angle. Jeepo's up here on the tent. He's holding the angle the original guy came in from. Now we're at least covered. You know, it would have been great to have an optic here, but even if we had an optic, uh, there's not a whole lot of that you can see when you're kind of like in this situation when it's this foggy. We wait a little bit and we're trying to figure out if they're going to make a move, if they're going to uh, loot the body and just dip, if they're going to move in this way, if they're going to make a really big long flank, if they're just going to move on and say, hey, I've got a quest to do. So we're not seeing a whole lot. We wait a little bit, so we're getting a little bit more comfortable. We'll move up. He's still up on the tent. Uh, he did see somebody really quickly. We weren't sure if he was just getting his buddy's loot and leaving, but we heard the grenade. Some time went by. Jeepo saw somebody really quickly, so we're like, okay, well, these guys are probably just waiting around. If they're not going to make the move, let's make a move. So I move up. Jeepo starts trying to call out what van. I am a little confused. I don't play interchange nearly as much as Jeepo, so I'm a little confused exactly as to which van he's talking about. Um, and But I'm using this cover. I'm moving back and forth, and I spot this guy moving in. So he, they move in from a different entrance than they originally came in. They came in, the first guy came in back here right behind us. They make a flank, and they start coming in through here. The other guy's probably already moving farther down this way and going to come in closer behind this connex because we know that there was an additional guy. So we see this guy. I call out where he is and then Jeepo immediately starts to move up. And at this point, uh, it's really just the situational awareness is trying to give each other as much and as little information as possible. We want as much information in as little words. And Jeepo is really good at that. And that's something we've been working on is he's letting me know if he's reloading, he'll say mag check. So that way, if this guy starts pushing, I can pull aggro because he's in the middle of a reload. We're letting every uh, each other know when we're tossing nades and kind of where, you know, my nade's going to go past you. My nade is going to go here. We're never really doing the same thing at the same time. We're trying not to. We're trying not to both be throwing a nade. We're trying not to both be reloading. And those little bits of communication help us kind of swap the aggro confuse this guy. He's throwing a nade at Jeepo there. So I start lighting him up from the other side of the car. I reload. He's throwing a nade at me now. And we're just kind of back and forth, back and forth. I push left here and Jeepo immediately calls. I'm pushing farther left. So we're like moving as a unit. I'm not pushing in. And then now we're both together and we can both die to a nade. I push left. He pushes farther left. He's behind the connex. I get a few cheeky shots on this guy's foot. This guy is in a bad spot. He's confused. Uh, I think of anything, his teammate, which we find out like a minute later than this, is way to our left behind that connex. Uh, should have been lobbing nades over that connex at us, maybe gone for a push because we're both full aggroed on this guy. We see this guy. This is apparently what he starts to do. As soon as we eliminate this guy and I start to swing, we see this guy and I see him in a grenade throwing animation, which is lucky for me because on my swing there, he could have gotten me. So I run back, I call that there's nades, and we push super back, super far back. This part of interchange is nice because it allows you to almost like advance and retreat at the same time. I was moving back away from that grenade, but I could move away from that grenade in a way that actually puts me closer to this guy because of how much cover, how many connexes and little things, and that can work to your advantage or disadvantage. So... This guy uh, is really committed to throwing a nade. So he throws a nade there um, and he peeks really wide again, throwing a nade. I don't really have a whole lot of hard cover here. If he had peeked, this guy has a vector. If he had peeked with that vector, he could have absolutely wrecked me. There was another nade. Now I'm retreating from that. And I want to go back because I want to be able to swing. I know G post close. I want to be able to swing wider, maybe take this van as cover. Um, and I use my nade as a way to kind of like buy me that time to do that. I can know that the nade is going to roll. I can get a long nade there. That gives me a few seconds where I know that guy's not going to peek. I can take some more hard cover, and we basically just advance on this guy. That's Jeepo right up there, super close. I'm now on the dead body. I notice he's prone. I'm actually not sure what killed him. I don't remember if the nade killed him, if these shots killed him. I heard like a fragment. I guess that was Jeepo's nade right there, a fragment, and I thought he was still alive, so I took some extra shots on him, but boom, he's dead. So this was one of those situations where, again, map knowledge and learning to look 
not just in one direction helped. If we go all the way back to the beginning, if we walk in here and I'm only looking front, I'm only looking right, I'm only looking for scavs, this first guy that I kill, which we end up going back and finding that body, so we confirm all three bodies um, and that it was a three man, this guy just one taps me in the back of the head. And I think that's the thing. That's where a lot of us are in Escape from Tarkov, where we've been in those situations where you're like, it's I've only been in this raid for like a minute. I thought I was looking in the right direction and I just get M61 to the dome or whatever it is. And I don't understand what I could have done better. Well, you don't have to play with a duo. This was just us saying, okay, well, you take this, I'll take this angle. But it's learning... It's learning how all the things, especially in the beginning of a raid, work together to create the situations that you're in. If you want to bum rush to a loot spot, then that helps you kind of wiggle your way out of those spawn fights a lot of times. But if you want to move a little bit slower like we do, it's it's learning to check all the angles just in case. I would say nine out of ten times I play interchange and get this spawn, somebody doesn't come back here. But... Because I knew he was watching this angle, I wanted to be constantly checking this and just making sure I had my angles covered. We didn't really get any audio here. I didn't hear running for this guy. I was just checking. I saw him. And these shots weren't even necessarily... I didn't think I was going to be able to kill this guy. These shots were just pushing him back so that we could get to another situation, uh, into another uh, scenario, and communicate and figure out what we need to do. So... I think that's the big thing that I wanted to take away from this fight in this video is that situational awareness isn't just always knowing exactly where your enemy is or where shots are. A lot of times it's the, the preliminary. It's before you're even getting shot at. It's knowing where people can be. It's knowing how the spawns work. And I know that that can take some time to learn, but resources like Map Genie is a huge, huge help to that. Um, and learning from every mistake, anything you can do, to get as much information as you can, even get eyes on your enemy, even if you die. That way you can like watch that death back and learn and figure out what it is that you could have done better in that situation. So I hope videos like this help. I hope that these aren't just ramblings that certain situations that super frustrate you, you can use videos like this and resources like Map Genie to learn how to get better and live longer and enjoy more fights and escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. Like we said before, I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. If you liked this video, drop a like, comment down below, or subscribe to the channel. That stuff helps me out a ton. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord server is an awesome place to be. Check that link down below as well. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.